It is currently 7.02 on April the 12th, and uh, we're ready to start our uh, general town meeting of the town of Comer Manor. Is there a motion for us to call this to order? Uh, this is Council Member Mendoza. I'll make that motion stated. A second. I'll second that, Mayor. Council Member Bowles. Bowles. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Meeting is now in order. Okay, let's start out the meeting with a pledge of allegiance. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay, if we could wait for a moment of silence. Oh, for all those who shut in those in the middle of war in Ukraine and those that we care about and are concerned about, let's just have a moment of silence to think of all of those people who need our support. And now if we can take a moment of silence and think about the things that we rejoice in, those things that comfort us, those things that make us happy, the air that we breathe in, let's take a moment of silence and just be grateful. Okay, thank you all for that. Thank you very much. Um, before we get further started, a couple of items that um, we'll need to address this evening. Um, Chief Stone has found another election judge, and so I'd like to put into old business um, the um, appointment of an election judge. Um, Mr. Baden says that we need to have a conversation about the senior van um, because University Park needs an answer. And also there's been a request for an interpreter um, on July 20, I mean, on April 21st for a um, candidate forum. And um, we would need to approve paying for the interpreter on that day. Is there a motion for us to add these items to our agenda? Council Member Hobbs makes that motion stated. And second. Council Member Mendoza, I'll second that. Any discussion? All right, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? Motion carries. All right, thank you guys very much. Uh, moving forward, um, main item on the agenda tonight is to talk about the American Rescue Plan um, and get a summary of the survey results and um, other items included that's been reviewed by Mr. Temler and his team. So Hamler, I'm sorry, Hamler and his team. So I'll roll it over to Mr. Baden and Mr. Hamler to inform us. All righty, Dan, do you want to start? Uh, sure, uh, just a brief overview. Uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, done a com uh, community survey. We've also had the staff submit recommendations for the use of our two uh, ARPA funds, uh, you know, and how to spend that. Uh, we had a community forum uh, last week regarding, uh, you know, other input from the community. Uh, we've taken all of those items and put them into a spreadsheet that the council has reviewed independently and uh, Mr. Himmler has compiled the results of that and is going to review what the outcome uh, you know, of that analysis was with the purpose of trying to uh, reduce down the number of requests that we got into the most uh, popular ones or the ones that people would like to see done in, in the community with the ARPA funds. 
Uh, as you know, we only have $1.39 million, which sounds like a lot of money, but based on the number of programs that were submitted, um, you know, it's not enough to do all of them. So we're trying to go through a systematic process by which we can prioritize and fund the top items, uh, you know, to go forward with and, and start getting the money out for those programs. So Tom has uh, the analysis, uh, you know, based on the last exercise, and I'll turn it over to Tom to walk us through that. I had also sent to each of the council today a copy of his presentation that uh, he's going to be giving, as well as a uh, another short uh, worksheet that uh, we're going to ask you to fill out at the end of uh, his presentation. He'll review that with you as well. So, Tom. Uh all right, thanks, Dan. Uh, good, good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, it's good to be back again uh, with you. I'm going to share my screen if the host can enable me. Thank you. So Dan covered some of this. I'm gonna not, not repeat it, but uh, you've done a lot over the last few weeks, as Dan mentioned, this, this slide kind of summarizes the, 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 the key aspects of it. One thing to keep in mind, particularly I just wanna highlight, is there were 73 different uh, agency and community ideas that, that we kind of narrowed it down to. And we greatly appreciate the, the mayor and the council and, and getting back with their uh, um, some more about their priority items. So that's really what we're going to focus on um, tonight. And we're going to kind of look at these um, in, in the nine different categories. In the, in the past, we've seen it and ranked it in a, in a big list. But tonight, we're going to kind of shrink it down and look at each of the categories specifically and what y'all's responses seem to indicate where there's strong consensus points. So let's start with um, public safety. Um, there was, as you recall, there was 10 public safety items um, under this, this category. Um, and it, I should start with the color coding. So green is where there was 100% consensus across the, 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 the mayor and the council who responded. Uh, the white is where essentially there was 75% um, um, had, had yes indicated specifically. They wanted uh, to kind of continue the conversation. And then the kind of the salmon color was items that were 50% or less. So just keep that in context as we go. Um, and so, so with public safety, there was 10 items. Uh, five of the 10 had at least a majority um, preference for further review, but note in particular, the three items that I had 100% had consensus. They were the, the streets, street lights, including the cost of operating them, uh, and also providing financial assistance in some form for the, uh, uh, the volunteer fire department. The, the other ones you kind of see where there was, uh, you know, 75% consensus. Uh, so the kind of the goal as Dan said was, since you only have 1.3 million and we're starting with a list of 73, you kind of got to get it down to a manageable number. So I think the, the initial thoughts that Dan and I had was as you, as we go through these, you're going to see at the end of the day, there's going to be a list of 26 items across these nine categories where you had 100% consensus. So the thought at least is to at least start with those and see if what building a plan will look like. It doesn't mean we can't come back and, 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 and maybe add other items, but let's just start flushing out those, those 26 items. Because if you do math pretty quickly, 1.3 divided by 26 is not a lot you know, for programs, essentially $50,000. So, so that's kind of the, the premise of this is we're gonna try to focus on the, the ones that are 100% consensus as we go across and, and, and build you a concept of a plan with dollars and cents behind it and bring that back to you. And kind of we'll, we'll see some ebbs and flows as we go through this process. Um, so let me move on to the next one. Um, and I should note on this one, I think one of the things Mr. Bowles noted with the volunteer fire that the town of Brentwood I, he, uh, uh, contributed, I think, some money already to the volunteer fire department, if I recall your note, Mr. Bowles, if that was accurate. Yes, they dedicated it the other day. And I think they, Dan, I could be wrong. I think it was 40,000 that they put in. 
Um, the ask is 5%, but do we have to give 5%? No, get- you control. Yeah, you control yeah. what that is. And, and that's part of what, if this continues, we'll have to flush that out to see if they're hitting, if they're asking funds gotcha. from other communities who, who they happen to serve as well. Okay. okay. Um, before we go on to the next category, um, you know, I think the council should uh, understand that, you know, we're going to propose going forward with the items that are in green and the ones in white and the salmon color, you know, unless you speak up and say you feel strongly one way or the other, we're not going to consider them down the road unless you bring it up subsequently. But, you know, this is getting us down from 73 to 26 projects. So if you feel strongly about anything that's not in green, you should probably voice that now. You're, you're muted, Mayor. Oh, do you want to do that now in this process or, you know, give everybody an opportunity to sort of take a look and think about it? I mean, how we've done this in some other communities is, is, is um, if folks have strong feelings now, it's probably better to, 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 to kind of indicate those, at least that they want to keep it. Because the idea of this is, is to try to get a consensus. I mean, we, we can't, as Dan said, we can't do everything on this list of 73. But if there's something that that is not in green that 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 the the the, the council feels very strongly about that should at least continue for the next as we go through the rest of the process, you know, please please indicate indicate those as we go. That would be helpful. Okay. Well, I would say that um, um, I asked questions about these the additional tasers. Um, uh, Chief can um, explain better than me, but my understanding is that the ones that we have are not going to be able to be serviced anymore. So I think that that is like a priority. Um, Chief? Yes, that's uh, correct. The tasers that our officers currently carry, I call them model one. I don't know the model number offhand, but it's an older version. And uh, it's my understanding that they will not be uh, supported um, for much longer. Um, I want to also put in a, um, a step up for the solar powered stop sign. Um, no, not the solar powered stop signs. Where is the... Um, the camera. Oh, yeah, not the solar powered stop signs. No, the solar powered. Why am I not seeing this? Video. It's the third one down. If you're looking for a security camera, it's the third one down. Oh, okay. Oh, all right. Security power. Oh, okay. Solar powered video security cameras. Yes. Um, we often say all the time, man, I wish we had a camera there to see what happened. And my understanding is if we had something like this, it can move around. And so when we feel like we have a problem area that we can um, put up a camera, move the camera into that area and be able to start to examine what's going on. So, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna also put in my holler for that. Okay. And I anybody think else? Will, yeah, and I think Dan and I will take silence as affirmation at this point. Oh no, don't do that. Okay. <laughs> It could just be, oh, we have to tell you this right now. Um, well, it'd be helpful because we got we got to you know keep this process moving and 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 we're like I said, we're going to come back to you with uh, 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 the framework of a plan. So it doesn't mean that, as Dan said, you can't add or subtract items, but it, this is helpful to kind of get what the master list is we're looking at. Okay, well, I think that's important to point out because if we say, if you don't say this now, it's gone forever, that's, that, that makes me clench um, because one of my ideas was a speed study for the town, which cross pollinates with speed bumps and stop signs and all these other things that are being talked about. Um, I can tell you that the folks on the street are bringing up speed bumps in all the wards. <laughs> uh, they are, and that's, and also additional police coverage. So those things have been brought up to me quite a bit recently. So if there's another way to approach that, great, but I'm feeling some energy for that amongst the residents. So. 
So okay. that would be a separate line item for a traffic study. Is that what you're asking for? That's someplace else in there. Yeah, I'm just saying that they cross pollinate. So oh. I mean, if, if we're putting in speed bumps ahead of the traffic study, that would suggest that we may be getting ahead of ourselves and yet they are being asked for. So I'm just voicing what I'm hearing on the street. Um, people are asking for them. The signs, not as much, but the speed bumps for sure. I'm hearing that a lot. And additional police coverage and presence. I'm hearing a lot. Okay, anything else? Okay, so this one, we, we at least we're continuing with four additional ones from this list outside of the three green. That's right, for, for further consideration at least. So well, I mean, three, if we're looking at this, I mean, if the, we're looking the at three green species, ones and then the four that's just been mentioned, security cameras, tasers, speed bumps, slash, probably with a study first, and then additional police services, i.e. some kind of increase in police services, whatever that may mean. So I would say this, um, so if we're looking at the white, then that's saying that 75% of the council agreed to that then that means that, I presume that means, because there's five of us, it's hard to understand what 75% Well, there was is. four respondents to the survey, so it's three out of four. Okay, so there were four oh, respondents. Right. Okay, so that means three out of four agreed. And I would suggest in the case where something was white is to um, communicate with whoever the person was who was against it and just see whether or not um, they're fine um, moving that forward. Now, the ones with 50% or, or less, that means that either two or one person um, did it in the same. And so I would say that those that are Simon really need some sort of a communication with the majority who did not mark these as their group. Right, and just keep in, keep in context to um, just place on your comments that as we go through this, you're gonna see uh, when you add them all up, the, there's if you if we start adding in essentially all the white ones where we had three out of four consensus we're going to add 20 24 more items so we're going to essentially have 50 items at play for 1.3 million which is um, we're, we're just stating what the survey responded and it may be where you want to go in this initial step and then we'll have to shrink it down again um, but but just keep that in context is green there's 26 white as we go through it's going to be another 24. Um, and then the salmon essentially was 20, the remaining 23 items. Yeah, I mean, I would also make the point that of the community items that were on the list, um, there was not one item on there that had more, pe more than four people um, had um, suggested um, out of the 52 respondents in the survey. And so I think everybody needs to take that under consideration as we look through these things that, you know, we need to consider four people out of the 52 survey out of the probably eight, 900 adults in the town is a very, very small sampling. So um, in consideration of, you know, a lot and a little. So I, I, I look at those things when, it, when I'm trying to make my considerations or the logic as in, you know, the security cameras for protection and, and the um, um, what was the other one that I said? Oh, the tasers, we need, the tasers, we need them. We, we, we need them, whether they came out of our budget or the ARPA budget, we still need those. Right, and throughout this process, I, we would say too, this also keep in mind the, 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 the the, the ARPA community survey as well and what the results of that was. Besides sure. just the comment section, that because that, a lot of times, when you have, anytime you do comments, you can provide comments in a survey, you already automatically kind of lose half the people because most people, a lot of half the people don't want to comment. So just keep, I think you look at those those th those things in, in, um, in, a, in a combined package. So, okay, any, any other items on public safety? And like I said, right now we had the three plus the four that were mentioned. So right now we're going to have seven of the 10 moving forward. 
Okay. Assistance to households. As you recall, there were six ideas on this one. Uh, five of the six, as you see in, in the color coding, had at least the majority. Four, uh, which was good, had 100% consensus of the four respondents. And you see those listed ranging from the direct financial assistance, i.e. like stimulus checks to mortgage and rental assistance uh, to the program administrator as well. And that one and, the, and also residential rehab rehabilitation program. And then three out of four said some type of food assistance programs for uh, low income uh, families. And I should note that there was a couple comments under financial assistance for residents and the mortgage and rental assistance that um, about it kind of being targeted uh, um, as, 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 we, as we think about building, potentially building a program that will be targeted would be to every, everybody per se it'll be somehow targeted to maybe household, certain household incomes, et cetera, those type of things were some of the comments. So on the, any other additions anybody wanna make other than the four? Uh, do you wanna continue with the, the food assistance conversation since three out of four had it? Right, well, I mean, I think, so there's two programs from Riverdale Park. Um, I, do, I don't know if they made it into this discussion where they had asked for a percentage of our opera funds. One does restaurant um, processing and the other one um, just does food, but they're asking for a donation. I mean, I would think whether we had opera funds or not, we should start probably making some donations to these places because they have, we have fed a whole lot of people from some of these different programs. Um, so I'll just put my two cents on that, whether it's from ARPA or otherwise, I, I do think we've been served well with food assistant programs and all we would be doing is donating to some money to the places that do this. And on the mortgage and rental assistance programs, aren't there a lot of programs at the county and state level already that provide those services? So why would we spend, the, you know, when we talked about funding programs in, in the very beginning, we said if there are alternative sources out there, we'd like to see people apply for those first or for us to apply for those programs. Do you have any further input on yeah, well, I didn't answer. I mean, so I made comments when I brought, reported mine because for me, some of it was a little bit confusing. I mean, it is something that I made comments, uh, particularly for those two, because in the human services position and recreation position um, in this job description is supporting and helping people find these programs. So in my comment, basically on the administrator was that 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 is a position that we um, are already advertising for. So, um, and, I, and I put that in a lot of different places in the document um, where I saw these things. So I'm answering yes, that we wanna do this, but I didn't see it as something additional. Um, I, I might even have made a comment said something like, but not with offer, offer in some of these places. So I could be clear, but I still answered yes, but I said, but not with offer funds because, um, I didn't want to say no, like I wasn't into this kind of a program or something like that. So I don't know how much that was taken into a consideration in, in this, because I'm not in favor of, say, hiring a separate uh, program administrator for rental assistance and or using our opera funds, because I feel like our opera funds, um, I mean, I feel like there's a lot of programs out there, and I would just rather have somebody on staff who's focused on finding these programs for people and not using our funds um, for it, because they're out there. So I don't think it's a green. Well, I mean, okay, I hear you, Mayor, but it's, 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 yes, there was some comments. Some people make comments. I mean, and, and this is meant for this kind of discussion to flush out what right. everybody kind of meant. So it's not, you know, we can't, it's, we, we, we try to, uh, part of this sure. dialogue is to, to talk about the comments that you, you and others may have had because it's, in order to kind of build consensus, you got to do simple yes and no, because otherwise it's going to be, we'll be all over the place. So your comments are helpful to answer Dan's question. Prince George's continues to run a rental assistance program. Um, State of Maryland one, runs one, but only for programs or, or buildings 
where they received uh, state funding through their Maryland uh, uh, multifamily bond program. So mortgage assistance, the county doesn't run one, the state of Maryland runs it, uh, runs a statewide program um, as part of it. So um, it's worth probably having a conversation, continuing the conversation as, you know, do you want to specifically set up your own program or do you want to do as kind of the mayor was suggesting that it's more helping people connect with and apply for these existing programs? <clears throat> to give Dan and I some guidance as to what you're, what you're thinking. Because Prince George's County has a lot of money and they're getting some more money. Um, the state of Maryland may lose some of their money because the way the emergency rental assistance works is you have to spend it at a, at a certain clip or treasury will reallocate it. And so Maryland's trying to figure out a solution to their to their um, uh, emergency rental assistance two program, they call it through the American Rescue Plan Act as to how to keep that from happening. So is there any other thoughts, agreements on, on that issue, whether it's actually running a program or assisting people in applying? Uh, what's the consensus? I think a lot of us voted, um, this is Council Member Hobbs, um, maybe for the, supported this um, rental assistance program because even though ex it exists, um, apparently our residents don't use it, may not use it, may not know, know about it. So, um, and we also saw the responses from other, from the survey that indicated that. So therefore there is a problem for accessing in our community for our residents to access this program and um, how we bridge it, whether we have an administrator specifically or a, a particularly delegating and using and reaching out to people to um, make um, popularize this program, make them aware that this is available to them. Um, I think it is necessary. Okay. And one thing I should have mentioned too, with the, with the county program, they 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 are not accepting new applications, so they stopped in mid December because they had ten thousand applications um, that they were processing. So that 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 is okay. worth also noting that that they haven't reopened it up yet. So just for food for thought to keep it up in your mind as this continues. And like I said, we don't have to have per se final determination of any of these programs. It's more just helping have the conversation so we, Dan and I can at least get a, a good sense of where, whether or not you want to continue the conversation with these and, and under what generic framework are we talking. So, so it seems like um, potentially a program, but also, you know, a, um, interest in, um, making sure to connect people potentially with existing, with programs that are out there. At least those are the two prongs that, 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 that seem to be um, out there right now. So with that, we'll just kind of keep that, those two pieces in, um, in mind as we, as we go forward. Um, and uh, we, we made a note on potentially the donations on the food piece, whether it's donations from ARP or some other source, but, but to provide some funding for the groups who do food distribution. Okay, we'll go on to the next one. Assistance to businesses. Um, this one, there was only three and um, two of the three had 100% consensus, the other one was 75, so on the Small Business Recovery Program. Um, on these, do you want all three to continue uh, or just two out of the three? So, um, 
I don't know, Dan, maybe you have a better feel for um, smaller businesses in towns because, you know, all of our businesses continue to operate except for the nail salon on the thoroughfare. So if we're talking about small businesses, we're only talking about someone who's a home-based entrepreneur. Um, I don't have a sense for who, um, who, who we have really at, on, on that level, and you know, except for a couple of folks. Um, do you have a better sense of our businesses? Who would be small businesses, not on the corridor? Yeah, I've not heard uh, from anyone directly. So no one's called complaining they can't pay their personal property taxes or anything like that. Um, have, you know, we're starting to collect business license fees. I've not heard anything from our code officer that anyone has uh, had any complaints. Uh, Tracy has more direct rapport with Mr. Redding. Uh, maybe he could weigh in and say if he's heard of anything, but I've not been contacted received emails or heard uh, from any of our businesses asking for any type of assistance. Have you, Tracy? No, I have not. And I believe Mr. Redding may be on with us if he wants to chime in for a second. Hello all, um, I have not either. Uh, I have sent out all of the applications to the businesses and um, Nobody has said anything to me about uh, struggling to make payment or um, uh, anything of the sort. Okay. Okay, so we'll keep two of the, two of the three then, so at least that for the for the next part. Thank you all for the comments. Uh, government services. There was 11 in this one. Eight of the 11 had at least 75% uh, uh, or, or more. Uh, two items in particular had 100% consensus. You see those in green, which is uh, partly what we were talking about with rental assistance to some extent, um, helping residents access services in, in, in a broad sense. Um, and then also improving the uh, town's website. Um, and then you have the, the other remaining um, six items in white, except for the taxes one, which is not eligible. So really there's five um, who had three out of four members have that on their list. Um, any of those five folks wanna continue with or? So I'm probably the one who didn't on the 75% white here. So expanding youth employment opportunities, um, the, the county program is significant. We have as many youth as we possibly can employ, usually in the summertime when it was not COVID. And I presume we'll be um, moving back into that now that COVID sort of chilling out. So I didn't see any reason that we would have to expand that um, the Port Towns use. Um, the Port Towns Youth um, Program also um, provides for the youth employment. And, you know, yeah, we wind up with a lot of kids here in the summertime working um, before COVID. So I, 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 don't, I, don't, I didn't think that that needed. Um, in terms of access to the town's facility for private purposes, that's what we do. So um, I, I didn't understand that statement. I don't know who voted and why it was voted on. That's, that's what we do. <laughs> Um, I think of this one, there was a specific um, comment from the survey was sent in particular with the with the kitchen and it was to if somebody ran a a catering shop or whatever that they would have you know be granted access to the kitchen so to speak in the and uh, to, yeah. uh, as an example right and we've done I mean we've done that we've had caterers that come in um, to use the kitchen um, it's not free but you know, residents get a huge discount, uh, but the kitchen or the hall or everything, I mean, that's that's what we do. I mean, COVID might have confused people because we haven't done it in a while, but yeah, that's that's just the normal business. And then lowering taxes, I didn't vote on it because I knew it had nothing to do with ARCA. So, um, and then and expand multicultural programs, including a higher bilingual staff. Up until now, when we had no staff, we always, we've had bilingual staff for over eight years, seven years. So um, 
that already existed as well. And, and presumably when we're hiring up, that still will continue as a priority, but I don't know how it has anything to do with ARPA. And uh, now the new van, and then that's not me. I did vote for the new van, so I don't know who it was that didn't. Um, I do think that we need um, to get a new van and um, we'll be talking about this a little bit later. The proposal I presume is somewhere around $12,000 if we go in with Bladensburg, so, um, and hire additional town staff. Well, we just need to hire the staff that we have budgeted for. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't mark that one just, but I did the van. So the other three are, the, the missing person would have been me, but for the hire additional, I mean, for the new van, I, I said yes, so I know it's somebody else. Okay, I guess for the others, is there, um, uh, uh, desire to to anybody else have any comments? I should say at this point on the on the other ones, on the white ones, and advocacy for them continuing or, or not. I think from what the word on the street is, citizens feel that they don't have enough access to the facilities because they are rented out for money making purposes a lot of the time. So the citizens feel like they don't have access to it. And I would also say that there are things on this list that I think are important for us to consider as a governing body that may or may not have direct access to ARPA funds, but which are important for us to keep and continue to talk about because it's important feedback. So I, th I think there's stuff included here that we all know may or may not really fall under ARPA. But is Well, remember with ARPA, since you're declaring um, revenue loss, it's pretty much, you know, anything um, at this point, except for certain the uh, pensions and can't lower taxes. So how would that reserves. look then if we, what does it mean to expand access to town facilities for private first using ARPA then? Is that is that using ARPA money to pay the rental fee that would normally be required to make it free for a citizen or a resident to use it? What, I mean, it'd be how you want to frame it, Mr. Bowles. They didn't get that specific as to what they were talking about, but it's, I think the issues seem to be more, and maybe they weren't aware that that that, that, that the catering company could, you know, come in and, and cook the food and take it in a, in a, in a uh, and deliver it somewhere else. I, I don't, uh, that's my <laughs> sense. So they may not be aware that that's allowable, that they can do that now. Yeah, I mean, I think that, I mean, I mean, I would not say that for those who, because I, I understand the comments about access to the facility, but it doesn't have anything to do with the fact that because we rent it out, what is, what is missing is two years. And I think that's really important for everybody to always understand and, and, and talk and communicate for people. This facility has been unavailable in general for two years. Um, we still don't have a staff person to run the gym. So we haven't even, if we wanted to open the gym back up to people because there's nobody to do it. So before, before COVID, just to be clear, we had many, many multicultural programs and events here in the town hall for residents through our recreation council. And um, we had the gym open where we had like up to 40 folk, um, local 40 people here on a regular basis. So this is something that if that, it's a question's on the table, that's, this is a totally, a, a, COVID thing. This facility had been open and people were aware of it and using it very, very regularly, um, um, residents included, and for free and paying purposes. So I don't want to get COVID too caught up into what people are experiencing as of today or the last year. So then how is lower taxes on this list if we know that it's not usable? It was just it was just part of the the the, the community's idea for transparency's sake. So I didn't want we didn't want to take it off. And then the three or four people who put it on there said, "Wait a minute, why is it not on at least this part?" Now as we go further out, yeah, it'll come off the list because it's one, you know. It, it uh, but but again, we don't want to set you all up for a criticism of why things weren't on this list. So, and we try to state when there's. When there's items on the list, like we did at the last meeting last week, when when it where they're not eligible, but they're people's ideas, so it's you know, we want at least have those vetted out in public. 
Got you. Thank you. Okay. So the only role thing on here then that, that the was the was the van then to be added, if I heard you right. Please. Okay. Thank you all. Um, community beautification, there was 10 on this one. Five had 100% consensus and granted, I'll caveat the, 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 the dumpster and the community cleanups, there was generally a consensus um, either, don't get fixated on weekly, but there was, seen to be, there was a consensus of all four respondents that, that those programs would be helpful, whether it's once a month, once every two months, That'll get flushed out, but but there was there were some comments made about maybe monthly or every other month. But overall, the gist of it was there was all in agreement that there, there needs to be community need to be the community needs to be cleaner. In particular, those two programs, everybody thought would would, would be a way to address that. Same with um, the other the other one. So you see a common common theme again with all these. Um, the assistance of seniors with maintaining yards or curb cleanup, that was everyone kind of agreed what we'll to figure out what that would mean as this goes forward. And then of course, code, enf code enforcement, as you heard uh, from the community and others is, is a pretty important issue. And then there was only so, two that, that didn't have, that would have three out of four. So I, I would oh. like to um, hear um, a conversation with whomever was not interested in the um, conversion of full-time code enforcement and the vehicle, um, because it doesn't match with the last line item, which everybody agreed was a better enforcement. Um, and I think if we have full-time, we did better enforcement. But since that's 50-50, I definitely would love to hear other thoughts. Or even if you you now agree that those should continue, whichever. I mean, it's. I think it's. Well, I I feel like code enforcement is a um, significant um, face to face with the community, even more so than the police, and um, having the ability um, to have more in that service area um, is probably even more important than an additional part-time police officer. But um, I, I don't know if it, it belongs here or just in further conversation on overall budget. But I would have, I was a yes on these two things. So. Any other thoughts from the, the rest of the, uh, the other council members? Okay. Thank you all. We'll move on to the next one. Community health and wellness. This one had a lot of items, uh, 12. Um, only one had 100% consensus, which generally was around doing more programmatic type things to improve that, that helped uh, uh, the residents have a healthier lifestyle, whether it's more activities, you know, get into specific kind of programming and those type of things. And then you had a, quite a few that had three out of four uh, uh, members uh, want those to continue. And then there was three that um, had less than, had 50% or less. So is there any of the, uh, any or all of the white ones that folks want to continue with? Well, I'll just make a point. I mean, I'm not sure why expand capital bike share program is on there because the county is providing us capital bike share. We already know it's coming. We're still on the list. We've been on the list since before COVID, and I've had um, Jackie checking on it to make sure we're on the list. So that's already um, a thing. So 
that's happening without without any cost to us at all. Okay, thank you for that comment. Any other comments for any of the white ones, the other white ones? The only um, thing I'll mention, I don't know if this needs to cost us any money, but you know, we have a health and wellness center on 43rd and maybe we can provide with the multilingual community health and mental health clinic, um, have conversations with them about expanding um, the services and just seeing if that melts in there somehow. So I would want to have a conversation to see how we can support them better um, for them to help offer those services. And then I would only comment that I am always in favor of whatever we can do in our community gardens. So um, I don't understand well water access and how much something like that might be. Um, but def so I don't know if I even voted on, but the beehives, the very ends of the fruit trees, I mean, I, I think we should support that. I don't know, everybody can have, please comment if you have a comment on any of these. The beehives are already coming, aren't they, Mayor? I don't know. I can't remember what was on the few previous list that we got. Our last gathering at the garden was for um, Amy to explain the beehives to us. But I certainly, could, I could certainly enjoin, uh, join you in saying that beehives bury plants, fruit trees, community garden. I would even also be open to the discussion of well water access because it could in the long run save us some trouble in the long run, but I'd need to know more about this as well. Okay, thank you, Mr. Bowles. Um, so we can add those, keep those two on the list regarding the community gardens. So. And, and, I, and I would just say, because something is not staying on this particular list, I think um, Councilman Bowles mentioned before, the information is still valuable for something we wanna do, like add monthly art therapy sessions. Well, our Recreation Council, um, and if we can expand that, we will be putting money in the budget no matter what for the Recreation Council, and these are the kind of things that can be discussed at those council meetings as to what the community wants um, to do on a regular basis. So not necessarily on this Arbor list, but not something that we're saying isn't important. At least right. I'm not. Right. Okay, thank you all for comments, the conversation on this one. Recreation, uh, there were seven items. Uh, two had 100% uh, consensus and then two had, um, um, uh, were in white. Uh, so the two you see that everybody agreed on was expanding the young youth programs, youth clubs, type things and then the uh, dog park and then maintenance on grounds. The one that we kind of talked about, I think at the public forum was improving the connection. Now that's just a question of whether or not it actually is on any you know, town kind of property piece, but that you can improve the connection. On. That did come up again in a discussion the other day a citizen in Ward 4 asked again, if we could somehow work with parks and planning and get uh, stairway access up the side of the levee, especially for those who aren't as mobile. Um, so that conversation continues. Yeah, and, and this is something that, you know, goes back from the time that they, uh, it, um, the time that they um, expanded the levees and took our walkway away. I, I really tried hard um, um, early on um, in my mayorship to get this restored. My fight was with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, after a while, it sort of faded you know, in terms of going to other things to fight for. But yeah, I spent a lot of time trying to fight for that one. It's, but I don't think it's any money connected to it. This is if Army Corps of Engineers has to approve it and parking planning would be the ones doing it. So this is more political. Right, so it'll be... Um... It sounds like there may be an interest in trying to address it still, especially with the Park of Planning having a new a chairperson now, um, as of last week, um, yep. to, have, to have the conversation with Peter Shapiro. So it may be worth, you know, squaring, yeah. squaring back with Mr. Shapiro in, in his new role and 
and see if, see if he can be helpful. Yep. Okay. Sure enough, I know him. Yes, so do we. As well. <laughs> so okay, thank you all for comments on those. Uh, this one's a short one. Uh, again, don't get fixated on what exactly this means, but the, everybody kind of agreed on doing something to to uh, improve internet access, whether it's hotspots to 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 something of that sort. Um, you know, that's left to be figured out what that exactly means. Um, but but everybody at least said continue the kind of conversation on, on this issue. And then uh, the last one's uh, public works. Um, as you know, a lot of items on this one, 13, um, quite a lot actually had 100% consensus. So there were six, um, uh, you see those in the green, ranging from you know, stormwater type projects to, to equipment to a common one, which is street and sidewalk repairs, including potholes. Um, this one is where um, I think Mr. Bowles was referencing early where you know traffic study to with speed bumps could could overlap to some extent so you can figure out where to potentially put those um, and then you see rain barrels and the uh, permeable sidewalks uh, uh, three out of four um, had that on their list so we have six 100 agreement any of the other ones folks want to keep in the conversation through the next step of yeah the I so I would only say um, stormwater management projects um, assisting residents with stormwater problems on their property and I just have to say rain barrels is a very very great way of of impacting those two line items that are green so um, I, I would really want us to, to consider that because it's it's a, a quick way um, for a lot of the water to deal with it um, with the rain barrels and um, um, would serve as well. Right, and that could be one of the solutions to the first one. And as you know, Dan and I've talked before offline, you know, when it comes to you know fixing problems on residential property, it gets a little tricky um, because what exactly does that mean? Um, uh, especially using you know public funds, um, so just kind of keep that in mind. Or maybe you know there may be different ways to address that problem. Which is, i.e., if you do an incentive program or something, maybe that you, you provide some funding, and the residents, if they have flooding issues, would choose to address those stormwater issues on their property if it's outside of the public right away and public infrastructure. Uh, but as the mayor said, rain barrels is a popular popular way of addressing some of those uh, issues in specific issue. So the only other one that I have something to say about, and I think that the way, because there were dollar amounts associated with these things um, on the list, they could also be, um, you know, stopping somebody from agreeing to it. But the Erico airless paint sprayer um, which I believe was on the list for like $6,000 or maybe no, it was more than that. It was like 12,000 or something. Anyway, it was, it was way, 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 way more than what would be necessary to get a sprayer. But I think getting a sprayer would be really important because I feel like the yellow curves, and they're all you guys have heard me saying this over and over again, when those yellow curves are bright and painted, it really helps the town look cleaner and better, and they should be kept up on a regular basis. And, you know, I hear from Public Works, they need the right tools to be able to do this on a more regular basis. And, you know, we now have hired our part-time street cleaner, and, um, and I would love for us, whether it's in this budget or a regular budget, that we go ahead and purchase that so that these, this can be kept up. We need it to be kept up on a regular basis. But the price, when I saw the price, I wanted, I, I would have said no for how much it was. But when I went to look it up, I looked it up online and there's, there's they're out there for $1,500, $2,500 and not what was on that requested on the list. Okay, 
I would also lobby to keep traffic study on the list. I, I spitballed a number on that, so it may be less than what I suggested, but I figure over budget rather than under. And I keep seeing things that look like fixes, little short-term fixes for the problem. If we put a speed bump everywhere in town that people want a speed bump, as much as I enjoyed putting in the speed bumps on 41st, I don't think any of us, including myself, want to speed bump every 10 feet. And I think there are other ways to address the problem of, of how traffic is moving through our town. So I would lobby to keep that on uh, and don't let the numbers scare you. Okay. Any other comments? So we've got three, three um, um, items besides the six then. What was the third one? I got traffic study and the, the rain, uh, rain barrels, and then she barrels. talked about the sprayer. Okay. I'll be at a cheaper sprayer. Someone, someone said this, and I would just throw in: I love the idea of the rain barrels. I don't think, I think it's, I think what whoever said was it you, Mr. Himmler, that said it could fall under assist with stormwater problems to have a rain barrel program. To me, they're hand in hand there. I think it's a great idea. I'm not sure it needs to be its own thing. I think it can be a part of right. it. Right, it can be loop, lump, lumped in, I, I agree. Okay, thank you all. Um, so that was, the, that was the nine. So we, we, we obviously added uh, a few, we'll tally it up. Um, after the meeting, but, but it's safe to say we're, 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 we're north of 30 um, that are continuing um, um, at this point. Um, so kind of the next piece, and this, you know, we, the benefit of the, the community survey is you, you got a, you know, kind of clear direction where, where their priority was in the four treasury spending categories. But one thing that'd be helpful um, for Dan and I and our team is, um, and this is what he alluded to earlier. So we have these nine categories that we just went, went through. It would be helpful to get a sense from highest to lowest priority uh, for, for the, the mayor and the council of these, because that's usually where your higher priorities are, where your money goes, right? So, um, so and, and Dan, you know, has the has the, the form and so forth. If you could, um, you know, put these one through nine, that would be helpful because that'll then start framing as we start building some potential program, you know, with dollars and cents behind it and some uh, high level high high level framework of what the programs may be. Uh, that that that'll help us kind of direct where the resources may go. Um, so if you can do that, that would, Dan and I would appreciate that um, uh, from you. And then kind of next, how we, how we go from here is, and thank you all for, for the input that was, that was helpful. So we'll take the, the adjustments to this consensus, consensus uh, items. We'll start building uh, at least a framework of, of, a, of an ARPA program and bring that back to you. And again, like we said last week, it's, this is gonna kind of get continuing to refine as we go. You may add, you may subtract, you may take out some programs from this 30 some, 30 plus ideal list where we are now. Um, but the idea is to, to start putting dollars and cents behind it so you can start seeing and the community can start seeing potentially where the, the funds will go and what programs and, and things will get funded. Um, and, and so that's kind of the next, the next steps that, that, that Dan and I will, our team will work on and then bring back to you as when we have the framework of, of that plan. Um, so with that, I will stop sharing and Dan and I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. Well, I want to first say thank you very much. Um, this has been very useful exercises and I appreciate you and your team putting these things together for us. You're welcome. It's, 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 it's fun helping communities build the plan. You know, <laughs> everybody has, does it kind of slightly different, but it's, it's good. It's, 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 and, and I would say, you know, you're, you're not, you know, you're, you're kind of aligned with a number of folks. I mean, a lot of folks are still in this stage of, 
of building of building the, the framework. And I think, you know, we said it before, I mean, you all did it right where you've had a lot of community feedback and some communities haven't done done as much as you all and that's you should be commended for that and the community should be commended for their participation uh, because your community is very very active in, in in sharing ideas so so kudos to everybody okay council any of you have any questions for mr hemlock mr baden do you need to share anything additional at this um, time so that spreadsheet that Tom talked about where you categorize or prioritize the nine um, major categories, if you could get that back to me in the next week or so, if you're coming up for the uh, committee of a whole to discuss the budget today, I've got hard copies. If you rather have a hard copy and jot them down, um, I would think, you know, we're going to be pretty tied up with the budget for the rest of this month, but the next time we would be discussing uh, the ARPA plan would be at the May work session, I would think. So that's May the 3rd. So, you know, go through those lists that we just went through, the green items, you know, think about, you know, how we would implement those programs, uh, the ones that we talked about, so that, you know, when we reconvene to discuss it on May the 3rd, um, yeah, you know, you know, we, we should don't have, have a work session on May third. Oh, uh, that's the that's the uh, election, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, so are we having a meeting? I'm not sure if we decided on a meeting that week, did we? Well, I believe the one date on the table is April the 25th, and um, that was really just going to be a budget meeting because. Right. We wanted to introduce the budget and have the public hearing on the 10th. So, yeah, right. I guess we'll have but, to. But we were supposed to get two dates. And I don't know, um, Councilmember Bowles, we were looking for two dates from you. If you had another one, you could squeeze in before the 25th. And that way we can squeeze a little bit of this into that. I can no, try. It's, it's very, very difficult, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. um, if I have to be out, I can be out and zoom in, but uh, with the end of the semester, right? I got to be in four places. So. Yeah, I, I think will look again tonight and see if there's anything, but it's pretty tight. Yeah, I think when we went through everyone's schedule at the last work, I'm looking at my notes again now, the 25th or the, was about the only day we had before uh, the uh, May 10th. So, you know, I guess let's see how far we get on the 25th and maybe ARPA gets put off uh, until May the 10th. Yeah, but my only problem, my concern about it is I feel like ARPA is a wrap around, it's gonna wrap around our, our budget items. There's some wrap true. around in there. Well, so one, one suggestion, Dan, may be if, if, the, if the mayor and the, the council can you know, do that one through nine and get it back within the week, next week, then our team can at least start trying to build a framework of ARPO with 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 and share that with you and 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 build kind of a plan and do it that way. And then so we get your the stuff back to you as soon as possible. Then you guys can continue to do some work in the background. Yeah, we'll continue to do work while Dan's obviously stuck right. with the budget. We'll we'll start trying to build based on the feedback and everything a, a couple framework options. Uh, they kind of sync with that so that when whenever if it's after May 10th or whatever that you'll have I don't, I don't think it needs to take us a week to turn back in just the ranking of those items. no it should be pretty quick it's just one through nine again just fix on the broad categories don't go down into the to, to, to right. the week it's just of those main categories taken into consideration the survey results that you have from the summary from before you know where and, where's the priority is Right. And some of the and things and like, he has a fillable PDF too, if you can't get it to, you know, simply put in a number. He has he has a PDF version that's fillable as well. Yeah. So my question, Dan, would be things like the fire department donation. And we're all inconsistent about it. We always give the fire department a donation. And now that we have ARPA funds, I think that we're all inconsistent to give them more than we normally give them um, because we have the ARPA funds to do that. So I would expect that to show up in our budget that we present to the public because I don't want to present a budget to the public that doesn't show us giving the donation to the fire department. 
So that's the kind of, I mean, I'm not asking you to answer that, but that's the kind of twisty kind of things that I think that we're going to have to deal with some of this stuff as we're working on the budget. Right. So I, I would agree with that. And so let's plan on the 25th, even if it's for a short part of that budget meeting to bring ARPA in so that if, you know, that's two weeks or so from now or about two weeks or less than two weeks. Uh, would that be doable, Tom, to, uh, you know, kind of put that list together with maybe a preliminary plan and funding? You're muted. Sorry, that's tw uh, roughly two weeks from today. Yeah, two weeks from yesterday is what yesterday. it is. Um, and just, just so that we kind of Yeah, see it could be for the framework of it, yeah. That, that's that's probably doable. Yeah, I'm thinking just, you know, showing us what the projects are that we've narrowed it down to, or at least at this point. And, you know, some of those items we have dollar values and, you know, at least we could talk about it in conjunction with our budget. Um, right, and know, we can I, plug I in some other to, dollars for the ones yeah. that don't have dollars. So, okay, no, that's, that's doable. We'll talk with some of those, uh, some of those with you and your agency folks as well. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. All right. Thank you all. Have a good evening. All right. You too. Take care. Okay. So moving on, um, I'll report real quick on our work session last week, which by the way, was our shortest meeting that we've ever had. <laughs> um, the, um, the meeting last week, um, item on the agenda was to appoint election judge. Um, uh, which we did, um, and then uh, we reviewed the ARPA survey um, and the form results um, with Mr. Himmler. Um, we had a request for a waiver um, about a sump pump discharge, and um, I'm sure we'll be having further more conversations about that. Uh, we approved the waiver um, and encourage people who feel like they have an issue or a problem on their property to um, just call up and um, um, let us know. Um, you can talk to code enforcement. Um, as you see Mr. Reading around town um, and Mr. Reading, you know, if you see issues, we want to engage people in this so that we can support helping people resolve issues on their property. Um, the chief gave us a review of the PEPCO poll pricings and um, his recommendations. I think the polls are like $1,200 a piece um, and he's recommending 11 new polls. Um, which also was a consensus on this ARPA budget that we just talked about. And then we had um, set the budget schedule as we just talked about uh, moving forward on working on the budget. Um, the budget we plan to introduce um, in the May. Um, is it, tell me again, Mr. Baden, when are we supposed to introduce the budget? Um, we're going to have the budget hearing on May the 10th. Um, okay. We'll have a work session. Well, well, we'll be discussing it tonight at the uh, council hall and then also on the 25th of April. So we just need to get the advertisement in for the hearing, right? For yep. the 10th. Okay. Yep. So we'll be advertising that hearing for May 10th. And, um, and that was work session. Uh, moving forward, um, you have a report, Mr. Baden. Give us an overview. Uh, yep, I think I should be able to share it. There we go. So I'm just going to hit the uh, summary numbers, uh, you know, copy of the reports available uh, at the town hall if you want to see it in more detail. But I'm just going to go through it pretty quick because we're going to spend uh, quite a bit of time on that later uh, on this evening. So um, first page is the revenue side. Um, largest item is the real property tax revenue. We've collected about 98% of that, um, $982,000. Um, we did receive uh, additional income tax. They gave a uh, special distribution this month. I uh, can't remember exactly what it's for, but you know, it was about additional $800. So we got two distributions this month. Uh, or for the month of March, bringing the total to 67,000. Uh, still should be on target for the $125,000 that is budgeted. 
Uh, we received the third quarter state aid for police grant. So we've collected about 75% of that grant, 16,2828 out of the $21,000 budget. Uh, rental income is uh, coming better than expected when we but when we prepared the budget. Uh, we're right about budget now with uh, you know three months left in the year. So that is a positive. Um, Red light camera violations, speed camera violations is down. We've only collected 45% of the speed camera revenue, or I'm sorry, red light camera revenue, um, you know, which, you know, is below what we had budgeted for. Uh, down here is the uh, ARPA funds, the first uh, distribution of the ARPA funds, 656,000. This is the revenue side. Um, so total revenues for the July to March period were $1,909,000. On the expense side, uh, you see the general government expenditures here with total costs for the nine months of $273,000. Payroll taxes and benefits, which includes health, life, and workers' comp, $68,000. Senior van expenditures of twenty nine. dollars uh, code enforcement, 3,000. And this is just for one month uh, that we have started receiving uh, billings again from Cottage City. Uh, you know, they pay for the code enforcement officer and we share in those costs. So we'll start seeing these uh, costs come in on a monthly basis now. Uh, under public works, total of $196,000. Uh, you can see the uh, categories that make that up. Community Center Town Hall, uh, you know, largest portion here is the debt service, 186,000. Um, this is over budget by 30, is based on the new bond. And, you know, we had projected the full amount of savings when we prepared the budget, but the bond didn't close until, uh, you know, a third of the way through the year. So, you know, the total cost, uh, we didn't achieve 100% of the savings as if if we uh, closed on that beginning of the year. So that is why that is over budget. The other items here are maintenance costs under police, uh, public safety, uh, total of $258,000, uh, largest portion coming in at salaries of $197,000. Um, community center, uh, operations 15,000 that's mainly associated with rental expense uh, for the rental of the facility uh, a lot of that is the watchman's fee and cleanup fees and then down here are expenses incurred for ARPA projects that uh, have been authorized to date so total expenses 1,099,000 positive cash flow our net income is 810,000 a uh, large portion of that is, you know, the additional ARPA funds that haven't been spent to date. Um, that's, that's really a quick overview of the report, and I'll try to answer any questions if you have any. Mr. Bain, you said there are hard questions? copies at the town hall? Yep. Okay. Did you send those to us? Because I didn't get anything in the email as usual. Uh... It was just prepared late, so you oh, okay. probably did not get one, but I'll send gotcha. one out to everyone at the council. Awesome. Now, can you go back to public safety? Let's go, let's go police gasoline. It looked, how, what was that percentage? Um, that is overspent at this point, and I'll give you an explanation for that uh, at, at a later time. Oh, God, that's almost two, okay. Yeah. Almost 200%, okay. Yeah. All right, um, is there a motion to accept the treasurer's report? This is Council Member Mendoza. I'll make that motion stated. A second. Council Member Harding, I'll second that. Okay, um, any discussion? 
Uh, okay, I'll call for a vote, vote one. Aye. Vote two. Aye. Vote three. Aye. Vote four. Aye. Mayor votes aye. Thank you very much, Mr. Dayton. Okay, moving well, on, uh, Chief. Chief, you have a report um, and a code report, a police report and code report. I'm sorry, I do, and pardon me just one second here, just trying to juggle some things. For the uh, police report for the uh, month of March um, 2022, um, there were 120 uh, calls for service or police-initiated uh, incidents in the town. That's a little bit, well, actually, it's a lot higher than usual, but we um, had a, a new police officer during the month and that accounts for a number of the officer initiated uh, incidents, particularly traffic stops, um, which were up quite a bit. For calls that resulted in um, police reports, we had seven police reports and I'm just going to skim through those real quick. Nothing terribly major. We had a shoplifting at the CVS on the 16th. Um, the suspects left in a vehicle and the police stopped it up the street, recovered the property and also a significant amount of property like to the tune of a thousand dollars or more from other stores, not in the Comer Manor area, but um, at, a, at a shopping center and they notified the uh, property owners and they came down and recovered it and that vehicle was impounded. Uh, and the most significant incident during the month was an indecent exposure that occurred on the 22nd in the uh, 3400 block of 40th Avenue and an adult female that was walking uh, down the street and the parked vehicle with a male inside that exposed himself. There was a, the, the victim of this was quick thinking and uh, videoed the vehicle as it would pulled away. So we were able to get a tag number. Um, the officers conducted an investigation, located the vehicle within a few days. Uh, identified the suspect, and that person has since been charged with indecent exposure. That's um, awaiting court. Two minor uh, accidents in town that resulted in uh, police reports, both of them hit and runs, one at 38th and Bladensburg Road, and one at the uh, Port Town Shopping Center, both um, minor damage, no injuries. Traffic enforcement, we had 28 traffic stops resulting in 52 violation notices. We did have a uh, neighborhood watch meeting during the month. Um, I'll be working on hopefully a field trip uh, in the not too distant future to the county police call center to get an idea of how calls are handled when they come in. There's always a discussion of that. And there's uh, uh, sometimes a what we, what we see as a delay or feel as a delay, but the, that'll kind of explain uh, how all that um, takes place. And there's also a request for a, a self-defense class, particularly for the ladies, and I'm trying to arrange that. Uh, during the meeting, I talked about crime statistics for the, uh, the year, um, for the first three months of 2022 compared to 2021. This is the, the what I, made note of was crimes that are reported as UCRs, Uniform Crime Reporting, goes to the FBI. Those are uh, things such as an assault, robberies, um, things of that nature. And we're down about 50% compared to last year, which is very good. We're down from 20 to nine. So I just want to make note of that. A uh, couple of animal complaints during the month. We try to handle um, what we can in town as far as animal complaints. We had a uh, Complaint of a barking dog, 3700 block of Monroe Street. That was an ongoing problem during the month. Uh, Mr. Redding from Code Enforcement and myself met with the owner. That has um, been reduced significantly. I don't know that it's 100% gone, but it is has improved a lot. We're still monitoring that one. And I received a complaint uh, just the last day of the month of a pit bull residing in the 4000 block of Lawrence Street. Looking into that, see if we can locate it. And we'll notify animal control. If you're not aware, pit bulls are not allowed in Prince George's County since 1997. Uh, for code enforcement, um, Mr. Redding is on board. And I've asked him to join us tonight. And if he can just, well, the, the original plan was to go in more detail with the code report. Um, if he can just touch upon it for a moment. And particularly, a, 
uh, talk about the incident in the 3400 block of 40th Avenue where the uh, citation was issued. So Mr. Redding, you're still with us. I am. Good afternoon, everyone. Well, good evening now. Um, good evening. So let's see. Uh, starting in February um, in the 3400 block of 40th Avenue, uh, I noticed a property that had uh, a large amount of debris and rubbish and household materials and trash and everything else in uh, the driveway. Um, on let's see, one, two, three, four, five separate occasions. Uh, I visited the property, left my card, left notices, uh, door hangers, um, sent mail, both certified, uh, regular uh, tape to the door um, and have had no response, unfortunately. Uh, so that said, um, I had to resort to issuing a municipal uh, infraction citation, which has now been sent to the courthouse. So now I am just awaiting a court date. Um, and uh, once I get a court date, I will be seeking an abatement order. That way uh, we can clean the driveway um, because it is very, very visible. Um, let's see, also through the month, uh, just let's touch up on a few things. So. Uh, there was four stop work orders issued, um, one for a deck, um, one for a driveway, um, and one for, let's see, um, oh, a, uh, a garage. Um, so I am happy to say that three out of the four have made application uh, with Prince George's County. Um, and all of those permits should be issued hopefully within the week, next two weeks. Um, that's really dependent upon the county. Um, uh, one of the stop work orders that was issued uh, prior to me coming aboard, I saw that the county has uh, um, issued them a building permit um, as of, I think, a week or two ago. So uh, hopefully work will start soon. Uh, that is on Newton Street. Um, uh, during this month, or last month, pardon me, uh, I made it a, a daily operation to go around town uh, Monday and Tuesday and uh, look for items that were, are set out for bulk trash, uh, because that seems to be a huge issue uh, in the town. Um, and I just tried to educate residents on, you know, what the requirements are when you're allowed to set them out. Um, it seems that a lot of people don't realize that you have to contact Bates in order to get bulk pickup. Um, however, uh, as a courtesy, um, I have been sending a list to Bates uh, weekly to try and uh, be the middleman and you know help them get it picked up. And I still ask them to do it as well. Um, let's see, uh, I was able to get Pepco to come out. A tree had fallen on uh, the 3400 block of 37th place um, and the tree had fallen on their lines. So of course, naturally they wanna protect their, uh, their assets. So, that was uh, removed and all of the debris has now been removed as well. Um, and then uh, business licenses. Uh, all of the business businesses in town uh, have been sent uh, renewal applications. Um, a handful have already submitted application with all of the necessary paperwork and payment. Um, there's still you know, a good chunk of them that haven't uh, returned them yet, but no worries, they still have a little bit of time. Um, and I think those are the biggest ones. Oh, uh, there is another one um, at the beginning of uh, March uh, in the 3800 block of Kearney. Um, I met with a gentleman because uh, there it seemed to appear as a, almost like a uh, landfill type of look. Um, and so, uh, the situation was that um, water damage had really uh, ruined his basement. Um, he was hoping to hardscape some of his uh, yard because it's slanted. Uh, however, it's just not that simple. You can't do that. Um, since then, a good chunk of it has been removed. 
uh, even though if you look at it and you haven't looked at it prior, you wouldn't really know. Um, that said, uh, I'm still in communication with him often, um, and he is working to get the rest of it removed. Um, and he's going to be reaching out to the county to see if there is any way he can hardscape any of his land. Um, and, you know, also trying to uh, reach out to the county as far as uh, water mitigation and things like that. So uh, those are the, the biggest ones that I can think of off the top of my head uh, and that I have jotted down. Um, and uh, it, that's about all. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So that uh, concludes the police report and the code report. Well, thank you very much, um, both uh, Mr. Raven and um, Chief. Um, is there a motion to accept um, the, I'm going to just do one, um, do them separately. Is there a motion to accept the police report? Council Member Hobbs makes that motion stated. Second. I'll second that, Council Member Bowles. Okay. Um, any discussion? Call for a vote. Would one? Aye. Would two? Aye. Would three? Aye. Would four? Aye. Mayor votes aye. Thank you, Chief. Um, is there a motion to accept the code enforcement report? I'll make that motion as stated, Mayor. Council Member okay. Bowles. I'll Bowles. second it. Second? Um, any discussion? So yeah, Council Member Harden, Mr. Redding, I'm um, really appreciative of the work that you're doing. Um, you're going out of your way to show the town uh, just exemplary neighborliness, you know? Um, we didn't ask you of that, so I just wanted to acknowledge that your efforts, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you Council Member Harding. Uh, appreciate it. Um, all right, I'll call for vote Wood one. Aye. Would two? Aye. Would three? Aye. Would four? Aye. Mayor votes aye. All right. Thank you guys very much. Um, I'm going to move on to a resident, um, no, no, community reports. Um, okay. Do we have somebody reporting um, for the Garden Club? And um, if we could just keep everything very brief because we do have to have another meeting after this one. So just let us know what you need and, and, and what's going on next. Hello, hi. Um, hello to everyone, Mayor, Council, Residents, Chief. Um, on Saturday, we're having a, uh, our biannual, I call it bi because we do it twice a year, clean up with Reverend Edison children. We're also asking our youth if they will come out. If they need community service hours, they should come out and um, try to help with the cleanup so they can get community services hour on Saturday. And um, I put into the chat room that the bees, the beehive is in progress. It's, um, Amy sh uh, showed me some pictures today that most of the equipment has been delivered. She's just waiting to, um, to set up. She's waiting to set up right now. So that's in progress right now, which I'm so excited about. We, um, we was looking, our, our greenhouse, has completely been ruined by the wind. We don't put it up with 20 times. So we're, we're looking at trying to find some other way. So I asked Jerome if he can check with one of the contractors to see if um, they can try to salvage our greenhouse. So if, if, he, if they can, I, I'm asking for an estimate and I will, um, do I have to let you know now or give or send you a letter or yeah, just, the budget. Yeah, um, yeah, we've been working on the budget. So um, you, you have any idea what range it falls in? It, it shouldn't be that much because when we first purchased it, I think between the frame and the cloth, it was almost $200 and that was about it. And we, okay. and we bought it from Amazon, but we wanted this time that uh, Amazon material was kind of cheap. And I was told, we was looking at Cardi City, how theirs was built. And yeah, haven't had any issues with their uh, greenhouse. It's still standing strong. So we're trying to find. Uh, it might be a little bit more. Uh, because right, right. Of work. Yeah. So I'm looking maybe three hundred to four hundred dollars if we decided to go that route. But I haven't heard anything yet because I just talked to Jerome about it on um, Monday. Okay. Um, 
So um, next month, I want to keep reiterating that um, we're going to do a composting class for everyone. So we want on May 21st. So we want everyone to, um, all the residents that is interested in it to please, we haven't decided the location and the time, but we do know it's gonna be May 21st. And um, I'm not gonna go into a depth on all the stuff we need to do, but uh, we're gonna start the um, beautification this year too, in June. We don't know what day it's going to be on, but we know that June, the month of June, we are going around to, to um, look at the yards and um, it's gonna be two, two yards per war and the ones that won last year cannot re-enter, we are not able to uh, win this year. And that's it. All righty, well, thank you very much. Oh, we're gonna do that. I'm sorry, and we're gonna do the announcement on National Night Out for the winners. Okay. So do you have a, um, a flyer for this Saturday um, to ask for um, the youth and the um, no, but I can get one put up. Real, I can send one out real uh, quick for you by tomorrow. I will try to have one for you, okay? Okay, great, great. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, gosh. Anybody have any questions? Okay. Um, thank you. Um, let's go to the Recreation Council. We have a report. Um, yes. Hi. Um, good evening, Mayor Council and Dan and the residents. My name is Vivian Jackson. I have been trying to keep the recreation uh, group together. Last month, we had a wonderful craft event. It was very small, but residents came out. We had a good time. The kids painted her houses and also did beautiful flower pots. Um, if you have a chance, please look at our Facebook page. You'll be able to see the artwork that they had. One of the questions that the residents did is they wanted more um, craft days. So that's something we're looking forward to do. Um, this Saturday coming up, we're having our annual Easter egg hunt. It will be from 12 to 3. It will be at the Newton Street Park. Uh -oh. We lost you. Are you still there? Oh, I'm progress. So somebody was recording me. <laughs> anyway, so. <laughs> Uh, we're having our Easter egg hunt, and it will be April the 16th from 12 to 3 at the Newton Street Park. Like I said, I call it the Blues Park because that's something that when I was on council, we talked about, we voted on, and it spearheaded on to the new council. Uh, but the event will be from 12 to 3. We're hoping it's a community event. We'll have different sections for Easter egg hunt. We'll have lots of game, music, um, craft craft tables for kids to play. So it basically is a family event. Um, that's about it. My May um, recreation meeting will be later on in the month because my three recreation people that Oh, we lost you again. I'm not sure why like someone keeps me saying recording in progress, but come out this Saturday at our Easter egg hunt. Thank you. You were saying something that you were going to need something later on, later in the month or something, because you're free recreation, and then that's when you dropped off. Oh, I was just saying that normally we have our um, recreation meeting the first Monday of the month, and I know that next month is election time, and at my recreation meetings that I've been having, the three people that's running for mayor, they always attend. So I think that I'll, I'll just wait and delay to have our next recreation meeting. But we talked about things going forward to do for the community, trying to do something once a month. And we're always looking for. All right, I think we got it now. Um, thank you. Thank you so much, um, Vivian, for keeping everything going. Much appreciated. Thank you. What do you mean progress? Well, <laughs> thank you all. All right. Thanks. Okay, do we have a neighborhood watch report? I think the chief did a pretty good job of summarizing it. 
Yeah, oh, in his report I, um, also, right? Yeah, well, I wanna thank everybody who attended, you know, um, because um, we have some good, a good attendance um, happening um, on Neighborhood Watch. So let's just keep that up and keep your eyes open. See something, say something. Okay, moving on. Um, do we have a Hispanic Outreach uh, Committee report? Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, I was gonna actually um, use my time during the resident comments, but I'm happy to do it now just to save a little bit of, of time. Um, so the, it's not so much a report, but uh, thank you to Malik Harding. So Malik, um, I'm gonna start off this uh, thank you with a quote from Dr. Martin Luther King. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. We are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. So what does this quote mean? It means that you stood up for the immigrants in this community at the last town hall meeting. And for that, myself, my family, the immigrant residents of Comar Manor, and the Hispanic Outreach Committee, thank you. It was also a pleasure to have you on Telemundo with us, even though you don't speak Spanish. I've been showing that video off to everyone so people know who you are, and we are all proud of you. You showed us at the last town hall how to stand up for your fellow neighbor, how to have conviction. I am so proud of you and grateful to have you be a part of this community. Thank you for helping us push non-citizen voting forward. You showed us courage, strength, and empathy. If anyone says anything otherwise to this, I apologize. You do not deserve that. And as the youngest representative of the town, you taught us all a lesson. You didn't back down, you didn't cower, you stood your ground. You tapped into your personal experience and realized that injustice and inequity anywhere is a threat to all of us. This means the disenfranchisement of any resident is a detriment to us all. I just wanna say thank you for standing up for us for standing for what's right and equitable. We have your back and we support you. Monica, thank you very much. I really appreciate that message. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, is there any other community or partner reports that anybody wants to report on? Sure, Mayor Green Team, just a short announcement. Oh, yes. Just, Green um, team. Just, um, yes, Green Team had a number of pet, um, workshops last month. Um, one was hosted in person and then the next one was followed up online. And we would like to thank um, Ms. Leslie Brooks, who is our residence and also um, a vet for conducting those workshops. There will be another series of workshops this coming month. Um, so they're currently scheduled for April 23rd. And so please look out for a flyer with further information. These are really helpful workshops to, that uh, touch on the topics such as uh, pet vaccination, how to care, how to prevent um, uh, dog, um, um, I guess, aggression uh, and et cetera. So if there, and, and uh, generally Leslie is open to discussions. So if you have other pets that you would like to learn how to feed them, take care of them, um, you can uh, just email me, put it on the agenda and we will address those uh, questions together. We are planning to have the next meeting in the park. So it's outdoor. Um, thank you very much. What, what was the date? So right now, um, so the, it was scheduled for April 23rd, but I understand there is an, uh, uh, it's a, a, an Earth Day as well. So if it's a later in the day, I believe we can still continue as a plan. And also this, this was already proposed a long time ago. Um, but um, yes, uh, but generally, I, I uh, please look out for the flyer and for the information on the town um, hall um, sign board. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Any other um, reports that we need to? Okay. All right, so moving on, our next item is resident comment. 
Um, and um, anyone uh, residents that would wish to uh, make any comments at this point? Yes, hello, my name is Tamu Wright, and I just wanted to let everyone know if they were not aware that the Mayoral Candidates Forum is going to be held on Thursday, April 21st from 7 to 8 p.m. at the Town Hall. Thank you. Um, so Ms. Wright, I thought that we were gonna to try to do this on the, on the Zoom so we could have the interpreters available because we were gonna vote on so I am just relaying the message of what I was asked to say in terms of when it was happening. Um, I am not sure about any other issues. Okay. All right. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, and um, what hundred block, I'm sorry, what hundred block of what street do you live on? I'm at 4303 Monroe. Okay, thank you very much, Ms. Wright. Okay, I see. Um, is that an old hand, Monica? No, um, I, I'm just requesting that uh, for the forum, I, I haven't really had any clarity on what's happening and I appreciate Ms. Wright sharing that now, but if you could email me because I'm actually just trying to plan ahead um, for the next couple of weeks. And so I just feel like um, I'm not getting the info when I need it. Um, so please feel free to share my email. I can tell you what my email is or feel free to call me. I just want to make sure that um, I'm kept abreast because I, I'm also a candidate, so. So uh, I think we're all in the same boat on that. So we don't know, I don't know anything either. So I'm sure what, what I was going to ask them to do is like once, once they have the plans put together is to, um, either send us an email on how it's gonna work or to have a little short meeting so they can tell us what the plans are. So um, I know that um, Ms. Bethay had said that they wanted to just see what we did tonight before they were finalizing things, but yeah, I, I think we're all in the same boat. So um, my apologies for that. Uh, Ms. Bethay was not able to make the meeting today. So she just asked me to relay the information um, about the meeting time and date. Um, you know, I'm happy to take anyone's email, but I really don't have any more information than that. All right, thank you. I think that we might all be giving out our emails um, once we um, do our own little bios. Okay, great. Thank you. Sure, thank you. Okay, Dorita Epps. I see Dorita Epps, 4300 block of Lawrence Street. Yeah, I, I have not been getting any information. If it wasn't for Ms. Jackson, I would not be on this meeting tonight because I did not know. I was on my way up to the town hall, actually, for the meeting. I didn't know we was having a uh, Zoom meeting. So I didn't get anything on uh, Zoom meeting. Um, Zoom. All right, I'll, sure I'll, I'll check the list and see. I don't know why your name, you, you've gotten stuff before, right? Um, I, I haven't been getting the emails. Sometimes I get a text for the info, but I haven't even gotten that lately. I will check to see if your, your address is on the list. Thank okay. You. Sure. Um, I see a Shelby. Hi, yeah. Um, Thanks. Hi. Uh, so I just wanted to, um, I'm at 3313 40th Avenue. Um, this is my first town hall meeting, so um, I'm glad to be here. But um, in terms of you guys were discussing the rental assistance um, programs earlier as a possibility for the funding. Um, and I know it was mentioned that um, there were other rental assistance programs available for PG County and from the state. I'm a social worker. Um, and I wanted to point out something that I've seen is that those rental assistance programs are not currently offering sufficient funding to the clients that I'm working with. Um, they're not meeting the need. They're not accepting new applications. And so I would strongly urge the council to please consider um, the rental and mortgage assistance programs because I believe that they would provide a really positive impact on this community, um, particularly because the the state and county 
programs are not meeting the need um, at this time. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. I certainly appreciate you um, informing us. I actually might want to talk to you and hear a little bit more about what you know is going on with the helping of people. Yes, I would love to have more conversations about that. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay, well, that's the last I see there um, for um, citizen comment. And so um, I'll move on to, so I'll meet the candidates. Um, and um, I figured I'd do this in um, political seniority um, and that I would like to start uh, with Ms. Casanza. Could you please go ahead? Tell us what you want us to hear. Sorry, did you call my name? My daughter's yelling in the background. <laughs> yes. I said just okay. tell us what um, you want us to hear. Um, take a few minutes. Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. My name is Monica Casaña. I am an immigrant, a mom, a wife, a neighbor, a renter, a homeowner, an activist, and a community organizer. I was born in Bogota, Colombia, which is in South America. I was raised in Flushing, Queens in New York. I come from a, a family of housekeepers and maintenance men. My mom worked in the housekeeping at the Waldorf Astoria. I followed my family and thought that it would be better if I worked than go to school, and I went to work at the Intercontinental Hotel in Midtown Manhattan, across the street from the Waldorf Astoria, and I absolutely hated it. I met my husband in Brooklyn, and shortly after he got a promotion at work, he brought me to DC. We lived for many years in Tacoma Park and Silver Spring. We eventually got priced out. When I moved to this area, I got a job at the Hamilton Crown Plaza, and guess what? I hated it. During this time, I was recruited by a wonderful organization called Impact Silver Spring to be a part of, rent, of a renter empowerment program. And it completely changed my life. It changed the, the trajectory of my life. I became empowered and started showing up at Montgomery County Council meetings. I was eventually hired through AmeriCorps to work at Impact Silver Spring. AmeriCorps is like a lo localized Peace Corps. Through AmeriCorps, I received some money to go back to school. I went to Montgomery College. I then went on to go to the University of Maryland where I got a bachelor's in communications. And then I decided to go to American University to pursue a master's in strategic communication. Throughout this entire time that I was in school, I worked at nonprofits. For example, I worked at the Latino Economic Development Center. And there I helped people start their own businesses, stay in their homes um, and buy their first homes. I helped renters learn what their rights are, and I helped organize tenant associations and helped connect residents to nonprofit developers that would help them become partial owners of their buildings. I've literally organized all over DC, Southeast, Southwest, Northeast, Northwest, helping all people, black, brown, white, Asian. I then eventually came to this area and I briefly worked at the Gateway CDC. And that's how I became familiar with this wonderful neighborhood. I loved how funky it was, and I fell in love with how diverse it was. And that's how I knew that it was going to be my home. We, per we purchased our first home here, and I started my family here. I went on to work for the Montgomery Coalition for Adult English Literacy, an organization that works to upscale immigrant adults. I now work for the DC Department of Health as a public affairs specialist. The common thread of the past 15 years is that I've become a full rounded community building professional. I am passionate about the work I do. I am a social justice warrior that fights for issues facing the black and Latino community. This is my calling. In Coma Manor, I met two wonderful ladies, Vivian and Ms. Teresa, who inspired me to become more involved in the community. During my time here, I've organized a free dance group for women, I organized a walking group. I helped coordinate the Juneteenth celebration. I helped um, coordinate the Hispanic Heritage celebration. I've helped coordinate a Halloween event. I've helped coordinate the pop-up markets. When the pandemic hit, I heard that um, there were moms that were stealing 
at Shoppers and at CVS. And so I helped organize a diaper and baby food drive at the town hall. I helped create a flyer for seniors to become more aware of the resources available in the town. For Black History Month in February, I coordinated a book reading. A coworker of mine wrote a wonderful book about black hair. I created the Hispanic Outreach Committee to increase engagement with our Hispanic residents. And I just wanna make clear that I don't just do this in Comar Manor. I do this all over. People know me and they know how active I am. I've done this, all of this, without holding a position in town. I have now been called and inspired to run for mayor. I am a bridge builder and someone who believes we are stronger when we share power and when we work together. I've gone and I've knocked on lots of doors. If you have any questions, if you want to call me, if you want to talk to me, my email is vote at monicaforcomarmanor.com or you can also look me up monicaforcomarmanor.com or you can call me 347-424-9617. Again, my number 347-424-9617. And just thank you. Whether I get elected or not, you're still going to see me around. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Appreciate it. And you were right on time. It's at five minutes. <laughs> cool. Um, okay, moving on to Council Member Bowles. There we go. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, let me get my little written thing up here. Okay. So good evening. My name is Doug Bowles. Many of you know me already. I've served as a council person for Ward 3 for the last year and a half, and I'm running for mayor. On April 16th, it'll be 12 years since I moved into my home in Colmar Manor. After looking at over 200 houses over a five year span, finally, I was able to settle here in our beautiful little town. I, like Monica, was welcomed by Vivian and Doretha uh, and Skip and Martha, Yolanda, John, and so many others around me. Uh, immediately, I was surrounded by neighbors who knew my name and watched out for me when my house was gone, when I was gone, and I did the same for them. In short, it didn't take long to find friends and caring neighbors in our little village by the Anacostia. I'm 55, I'm originally from Southern Virginia. I'm a professional singer and performer, big band leader, and I've music directed over 200 theatrical productions. Uh, some of those meaningful projects, uh, a lot of them were had to do with the military uh, meaningful project I have here that was performing on a tour for the US Department of Defense. Our purpose was to raise the morale of the enlisted soldiers who were returning from the Gulf conflict and also for the World War II veterans uh, for the World War II reunion in, in 2004. It was one of the greatest honors of my life. While music and teaching have been a through line in my life, I've also been a grocery bagger, a yard maintenance guy, an executive assistant at an arts company, an assistant and contract specialist for an accounting department at the International Food Policy Research Institute, which was a multicultural international institution, part of the consultative group of international agricultural research centers, which studied different issues around the issue of feeding the world. Um, I was also an executive assistant in a, at a subsidiary of Chemical Bank. I was a summer gardener, uh, working as a staff member for a friend who moved here from Central America and started his own company. I taught at Montgomery College for six years in Rockville, 10 years at American University, 15 years at Catholic, and 12 years for the last 12 years. I've been at Howard University, where I am a career track instructor in the Chadwick Boseman College of Fine Arts under the deanship of Felicia Rashad. Always, 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 I have worked multiple jobs. Teaching and performing are not terribly lucrative, but they are deeply satisfying with a sense of being called to something bigger. If I'm elected your mayor, I will be dropping one of those drop jobs uh, to make myself even more available, though I do have a lot of flexibility as a teacher uh, to set my schedule to most uh, use, be the most useful to Colmar Manor. Uh, my, I'm, I'm editing as I go because I'm wordy. <laughs> I have a lot of passion for our town and its people, and I've come to know and love so many. And, and lately, I've been meeting so many as I've walked around the town to introduce myself to those I didn't already know and to better learn uh, those who I already did. You've probably seen me with my little dog, Louie, who is probably greatly responsible for how I know as many people across the wards as I do. Um, it's been a real blessing to forge new relationships. And I believe strongly that there is more that brings us together 
then separates us. We all want a safe, clean, well-run, responsive, respectful government, which communicates with all of its residents, includes all of its residents, and makes sure that it interacts with all of its residents regularly and uses their tax dollars and their money contributions in the town in the most efficient, useful way as possible. It's easy for us to get isolated in our homes and COVID has not helped, but I am really excited as COVID is waning and the weather's getting better and we're all out in the streets, really having meaningful conversations and getting to know each other in our little village by the Anacostia. I will work hard for this town. I have worked hard for this town. I've participated in pretty much all of the, the groups that are here, the green team, the garden club, town cleanups. Uh, I've been a liaison to the neighborhood watch uh, and I've worked with everyone pretty much on this, on this screen. Um, I'm proud to know and work aside all of the candidates and whatever the outcome of the election, I know that we will all continue to work together and move forward together. Colmer Manor, I'm asking for your vote on May 3rd. Thank you and good night. All right, thank you very much. Um, do you have um, any contact information that you wanna share with people who wanna sure. reach out to you? You can reach out to me at Doug at DougBowles.com. And my phone number is my council phone number and my personal cell, which is 301-906-0577. So that's Doug at DougBowles.com. Name is B-O-W-L-E-S. And that phone number again is 301-906-0577. Thanks for uh, reminding me of that, Mayor. Indeed. Thank you very much. Um, and um, Council Member Mendoza. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening to all. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak tonight. My name is Melinda Mendoza. I'm an Asian American lifelong resident of Comer Manor. I'm a small business owner, a mother of four amazing children, a wife, to my husband, Romel Kamamo, of almost 18 years. Um, we were actually married in um, our church here in Comer Manor, um, Comer Manor Bible Church. Currently, I'm also the Ward 4 Council member. I've been present in that seat for the last six years. And as my role of council member through the years, I've been active in various organizations in Prince George's County. As of today, I am a vice president of the Prince George's Municipal Association. I'm also vice president of the Asian American Pacific Islander Democratic Club of Prince George's County. Well, I'll try saying that five times real fast. Um, I'm on the Rogers Heights Elementary School Steering Committee. And uh, along with that, I've been a member of the following organizations in the past, such as um, WINGS, which is Women in Government, which was spearheaded by former Mayor Melinda Miles of Mount Rainier. Um, I've also been with the Prince George's elected municipal women. And um, from time to time, I volunteer with the Prince George's Community Collaborative Resolution Center, where they provide free mediation services in the county. Um, I've also um, served on, for MML, the Maryland Municipal League, where I've had, um, which I've been proud to have served on the board along with other positions. So running for mayor of Comer Manor, um, I can and will demonstrate the ability to be fair and transparent. I wanna start by keeping everyone informed. Communication is absolutely the key. I will continue to seek and develop more ways to be inclusive and to our residents by updating and utilizing our communications policy. Something as easy as putting a newsletter out periodically can open the connections in town. I wanna to continue to strive to help our seniors in town to get more services to them so they don't have to leave town to get services. And my young people need more activities. Um, I grew up with the saying, idle hands make fretful minds. Um, I wanna work with each of our neighborhood schools to get more projects into the town. So the list goes on, but you guys know, um, can't do this by myself. So this, is, this has to absolutely be a town effort. We have to come together to agree to disagree. So first I'd like to congratulate everyone that's running. I mean, taking the time and putting a petition in 
you're already a winner. Um, so may the best candidate win. Vote May 3rd for Melinda Mendoza for mayor. <laughs> so thank you. And um, you can contact me at vote for the number four melindamendoza.com. And do, I can be reached at any time at 301-801-8660. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Councilman Mendoza. Okay, so for me, I'm, I'm Sadar Barrow, um, current mayor of Town of Coma Manor. Um, I am a fourth generation, um, maybe fifth Washingtonian. Um, I grew up in Washington, D.C. I moved to Brentwood um, when I was about 13, I believe, 12 or 13, um, and um, lived there until I got married and moved here in Coma Manor. I've lived in Coma Manor for 39 years, been a resident for 39 years, and um, raised my five children, all here, born and raised in Coma Manor. Um, I um, came from um, modest means. My parents um, didn't have much, and we didn't have much, and we went to thrift stores and things like that to survive and, and any means that we needed um, in survival. So um, growing up, um, financially challenging, but at the same time, very loving and caring family. Um, when we moved, um, I graduated. I went to Northwestern High School. Um, I was able to graduate when I was 15 years old. Long story behind that, but it happened. I went to Prince George's Community College and from Prince George's after um, completing my associate's degree in accounting at Prince George's Community College, I went to George Washington University. I was very, very fortunate in going through the processes it takes in order to find the funds with no internet um, to do this. And as my life has um, expanded with these means, I have felt the need that, or the calling, if you will, that I need to help and support um, other people to bring their dreams forward. Um, I was able to get a job at Computer Science Corporation where I worked for 18 years in several capacities um, from general accounting manager to senior project manager and was able to travel the world through them. And I look at a little girl like me who had come up with um, mostly nothing and had so many opportunities in my life. Um, early on, I basically was focused on just you know, going to work every day and trying to make a living for my family and my children. But at some point, um, two of my children were put in the Port Towns Youth Council. And um, if any of you know Reverend Addison, you know that uh, she requires that a parent comes along um, when they're going on activities and, and, and doing certain things. And so I did. And I learned so much about my community. I didn't know. I was so impressed with the history in Bladensburg and the history from here. I, you know, I, I learned about um, what was happening in the town hall. I was so much like most people who just don't participate or get involved at all before that. And it opened up my eyes and it made me realize, oh my God, I really need to be a piece of this community. I joined the Port Town CDC, the Port Towns Community Development Corporation that is, on the board. And I was on the board for six years. And then I um, was hired as the executive director. And I spent six years as executive director there. Um, at the same time, I joined the council in 2000. So I was on the council for 12 years, um, off the council for two, and then I ran for mayor um, for the last eight. I was so excited of what I wanted to do for this community and this town and open up this town hall. I wanted it to breathe. I wanted people to be in it. I wanted us to do more events and we did. And we were doing so many things. We had over 40 guys sometimes down in the basketball court playing basketball. And we'd have even, we had um, a Native American festival here in the building and health, and health um, clinics here in the building. And so many things that were going, I was so excited and I'm putting my administrative skills to work and actually streamlining what was happening amongst our workers, work orders and response times and all of these types of things that I'm so excited to do. COVID devastated me. I have to be quite honest. And I feel like when people think about what's going on now and they're not realizing that that took so much of all of that progress away when COVID came in and shut us down and stopped us from being able to do all those things. I really only want that opportunity to get back to where that was and where we were going. I, don't, I want my two years back. I don't want to, I don't need to be mayor forever, but I really want to be able to be appreciated um, for what it was that we were actually accomplishing and being able to bring this whole thing back to life again and have a chance to do that. I'll be so excited to be your mayor again. And I would love for you to vote for me um, on May 3rd. 
Um, you can go and learn a lot more about my history and about some of the things that I want to get done at sidarbarrow.com. Simple as that, sidarbarrow.com. You can call me at 240-498-5466. I thank you all so very much for allowing me to serve in the best capacity that I possibly can. And I hope that I can get to continue to do that and really bring and breathe life back into everything that we were so hoping that we would have happening around here. Thanks again. All right, so thank you all, I appreciate that. And I would like to, um, so at this point, we'll find out whatever's happening on the 21st, if we wanna have further conversations, but um, I thank you all for all your words and, 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 and your lives um, and everything. The next item on the agenda is going to be on the council report, if you care to. Remembering that we have another meeting. Okay, mayor's report. Um, the only thing I have to report is that um, I did go to the mayor's conference last week, which was awesome. Um, learned some things. Um, we learned more things about opera. We learned about um, surplus. Um, supplies that we um, have the ability to get a hold of. And that was exciting. And, um, you know, we met with the governor um, as usual. And, you know, he, he, he said that, you know, um, how we use those taxes are going to continue for um, a while. Um, in other words, they had a sunset and they're not going to sunset. So that's very exciting that um, we'll be getting, continue to get those funds and hopefully we'll get back up to our normal set of funds. Um, that's all I'm going to report today. I'm going to go ahead and go to our old business, which is the election judges. And um, Chief, you want to tell us who and what, whom and um, what the circumstances on this election judge? Yes, we, um, as we discussed at the last meeting, we were in uh, need of two alternate um, election judges to just essentially be on standby on election day and then fill in if needed. Um, I was able to, or had one person contact me, and that's uh, Beverly Vinston from the 3600 block of 39th Avenue. So I'd like to recommend uh, her as an alternate uh, election judge uh, with the council's approval. Okay, give me the name again. Beverly Vinston, V-I-N-S-T-O-N. Well, I want to thank Mr. Vincent um, Vincent on step for stepping up, and uh, I would like to ask the council: um, Does anyone want to propose a vote to um, appoint Beverly Vincent as an election judge? You said is that a motion or is it just we're agreeing? Just a motion. Councilmember Hardy, I'll make the motion as stated. Thank you. Harding, is there a second? Uh, Council Member Hobbs seconded. Yes, thank you. Any discussion? I'll call for a vote. Would one? Aye. Would two? Aye. Would three? Aye. Would four? Aye. The mayor votes aye. Looking mighty sharp there, Council Member Harding. I see you with it. <laughs> I said the same thing. I texted him. I said, I see you, council member. Looking sharp Indeed. over there. Indeed. Okay, the next item on the agenda is, um, well, let's just talk about the, um, the Berkeley in interpreter for the candidate forum. Uh, Mr. Baton, how much is it, the interpreter's cost us for a um, session? Uh, $600. Okay, so does the council want to approve? Now we have to make sure they're fine if they're available and all. It's, well, first of all, let me get you guys to approve it and then we'll see. Um, is there um, someone want to make a motion for us to approve um, of $600 so that there can be an interpreter on Zoom for the- This, this is council member Mendoza. I'll make that motion stated. Is there a second? I'll second it. Hobbs. Any discussion? Yes. Um, do you anticipate, um, how long do you anticipate the forum to go 
um, on for? Well, um, we just heard from Ms. Wright that it was going to be 7 to 8 p.m. Okay. So um, I believe we have interpreters. I believe they're mat like it's a three hour minimum. Typically, interpreters can work under a two hour minimum. I would see if we can um, have interpreters agree to a two hour minimum and not a three hour minimum for this particular meeting. Okay, right. I will. And I don't actually think an hour is really realistic. Um, yes, I understand. However, I know that our interpreters, you know, that the two hour minimum is the minimum that they work under. So um, that will lower our costs. I understand that may, it may not go over, go over an hour, but I believe it will lower our costs um, and because right now we are under the three hour minimum. Okay. So I guess either we want to change it or we're just saying up to $600 is the vote. No, um, talk to, so we need to talk to interpreters to see whether they accept a two hour minimum for only this particular meeting payment. Okay. So if we say, if we, if we say we'll put aside $600. We'll put $400. That's all. That's, that's what it is. $400. $400. Mm -hmm. Okay. Council member uh, Mendoza, do you want to accept that friendly amendment? I'm sorry, mayor. What was that? Um, um, Councilmember Hobbs is saying that um, it should probably be four hundred dollars, and we asked them to do a two-hour minimum for this particular meeting. So we're seeing yeah. the um, motion to four hundred dollars. Um, I'd like to change my motion to what is it for? Four hundred. Four hundred dollars. Okay, Councilmember Hobbs, you accept that? Yes, I accept that motion. Okay, there we got a first and a second. Any other discussion? I'll call for a vote. Would one? Aye. Would two? Aye. Would three? Aye. Would four? Aye. Mayor votes aye. All right, thank you very much. Okay, discussion on the senior van. Um, Mr. Payton? Thank you, Mayor. Um, so at the last meeting, I had brought to you a uh, summary of you know where we are with the current vehicles that we have to operate the Port Town Transportation System, which is the uh, bus system for senior citizens and handicapped individuals in the Port Towns community. Uh, as you know, we used to operate with all four Port Towns. Uh, Edmonston and Cottage City have opted out of that service currently, and so we are uh, operating the service for Bladensburg and Colmar Manor uh, currently. Uh, the majority of the ridership, probably about 85 percent uh, at the current time, comes from Bladensburg, the other 15 percent from uh, Colmar Manor. Uh, over the last four years, uh, you know, we're operating a uh, 2006 uh, bus and a 2003 uh, bus, so you know they're quite quite old. Uh, you know the 2003 vehicle, the handicap uh, lift on it does not work. Uh, you know the rear of it is rusting out, so you can't really. Uh, uh, repair the handicap lift on it. Uh, the over the last four years, we have put fifty-two thousand dollars into the two vehicles. Um, so you know, I, I I had brought it to the council that there is an opportunity to purchase a used vehicle from a neighboring jurisdiction. Um, they used to have a shuttle service. Uh, that they stopped about two years ago, and they have two vehicles, a uh, 2015 bus and a 2006 bus uh, that they were using, and they have surplus them and are looking to sell them. Um, 
you know, based on the amount of money we've been putting into our vehicles, I thought it would be a good opportunity to purchase a good used vehicle if we went with the uh, 2015 vehicle. Um, you know, they have, I did not have a price available to you. I thought it'd be in the 20 to $25,000 range. Uh, I have received confirmation back that they would accept 22.5. Um, you know, if you look at comparables, uh, they're really in the twenty-five thousand, the twenty-eight, thirty thousand dollar range. Uh, they felt that they would, you know, because it would be uh, being used by a neighboring jurisdiction, that they would take, you know, more on the lower end of that amount. So, uh, twenty-two thousand five hundred would be the asking price. You had asked me to go back to Bladensburg and see what their thoughts were on it. Uh, the Bladensburg Council met last night. Um, I received a call today from their town administrator, Bob McGrory, and he basically did not have any definitive answers for me other than to say they had five different council members come up with about five different solutions to the problem, but no one coming to a consensus as to, uh, you know, what, what, what they should do. So he basically said, I don't know what to tell you. Um, so, you know, where it stands now is, you know, the other jurisdiction that has this fan needs to know whether we're going forward or not. I told them to give us to the middle of April because we were having our town meeting and Bladensburg was having their town meeting. Uh, you know, so I have an obligation to get back to them uh, with what we would like to do. Um, so, that's kind of summarizes everything, but I guess I'm looking either for direction, whether to purchase it or not, and without direction either way, uh, if it's not to purchase it, I would need to let them know that both Bladensburg and Cobart Manor uh, do not have an answer at this time and tell them to do what they would like to do with that vehicle. So um, I'll just add that um, I had a brief conversation um, with um, Mr. McGrory uh, also, and um, I guess this is this has been happening ever since we actually have been working together to support towns. <laughs> Whenever we're trying to do something together, uh, the complexity, the reason why the bus was so successful and we were able to do it was because the county would give us a bus. And so we didn't wind up in the same situation. Um, in terms of the fact that Bladensburg um, uses the bus more um, than us, I think it's more like 80, 20, but anyway, um, again, COVID has you know, sort of disrupted how everything was working and it really started to really cost a whole lot of money having a lot of repairs on top of having less ridership meant higher um, amounts of cost per rider that Bladensburg is looking at. And I know they're conflicted. Um, I don't think that they wanna get rid of the service. Um, and I think that they wanna figure out how to do this. I personally don't wanna be in a situation where again, we're depending on our shared team, our um, partner to own the property. Because as you guys may know, or I mean, Everybody wasn't here then, but you know, when we split with Cottage City, we didn't have a chief car because Cottage City owned the car. Right now we have code enforcement. If there's a split there, they own the car. Again, we would have to buy a car. So um, I'm not in favor of Bladensburg owning the bus. So um, which Mr. McGroy was saying, you know, if they paid the lion's share of the cost of the bus, then why not them just buy the bus? So I'm gonna say this to you guys. I'm gonna recommend we buy the bus. It's really a great price. I spoke to, and Mr. Blue is familiar with the bus. He said he's, he's been in it or driven it and he thinks it's a good bus. And of course, you know, he was a Metro bus driver for many years. And so if we buy the bus and then we charge for the use of the bus to Bladensburg, just like we pay Cotton City for the use of the vehicles that they own. So we paid something for the police car, chief's car, we pay now something for the code enforcement car. 
So if we were to buy our bus and then we charge Bladensburg, whatever their fee is for ridership, plus a flat fee, flat monthly fee for the bus, I don't think they're going to come to a consensus and this is going to stay in limbo and we're going to miss this opportunity if we don't do something. What say you? Yeah, I have no disagreement from Ward 1. Um, I feel like we've had this discussion since last year and we keep going into the same default. Uh, well, we, you guys can figure it out or we're not really interested in putting money into this or whatever the situation may be. So if we have the opportunity to get our own thing, I feel like. Thank you. I agree with you. <laughs> it's gonna just keep circling until we just gotta make a decision. Any other thoughts? Council Member Bowles, I think with the ARPA funding, if we have an opportunity to buy, how many miles are on this bus, Dan? 81,117. It's a seven year old vehicle. So less than 10,000 miles a year. And that was continuous riding. It wasn't idling. Uh, they ran a uh, 30 minute shuttle route uh, from, the, from the Prince George's uh, Metro station through their town and then back to the Metro. And they did that every half hour. So they did it for four hours in the morning um, and four hours in the evening. So, you know, it's you know, it a regular shuttle route that they ran. Uh -huh. yeah, I think where I stand is if we've got this money, I would, I'd like to see us buy a smaller, newer bus for our people and exit this arrangement altogether. Because as the mayor indicated, there's just been drama around this for years and back and forth and back and forth. Um, we don't have a huge ridership, but we could still use the, our smaller van for our own projects here and transporting people around for our own town's purposes. So that's where I stand. I would say try to find a smaller church style van that we could use for Colmar Manor and let, let uh, Bladensburg develop their own program for their 80% of the ridership. That, that's my thinking. So the problem, the problem with that I'll just share is that when we went to sharing, which was Bladensburg or mostly in the beginning, it was our only suburb, it was our only solution to surviving the cost of the bus because we'll pay for the drivers, which is the lion's share of the cost is the drivers and not the bus. And so even if we got a smaller bus just for us, we still have to pay for the drivers and um, that's where the cost is. So when we went into the sharing scenario with Bladensburg, it saved our program um, because it was just us in the beginning. So I, that, would, that would just be my sharing with you of the history of what happened in the past. If we had, um, if we had it just for us though, wouldn't we not have to offer it as, as regularly? I mean, the cost of the drivers could go down because we wouldn't need them as regularly as a Port Towns wide operation service. No, we, well, we cut back the doctor's appointments from Monday, I mean, on one day a week um, already to try to cut back some. But at the end of the day, people don't have that much control over just making their doctor's appointments on one day. And that's the lion's share of what we use the bus for is doctor's appointments. So, How's Cottage kind of City doing on their own? Uh, I have no idea. They're, they're not operating. They're operating in their own system, but not with anybody else, correct? I don't know if they are. I don't know if- um, So they're managing their senior transportation. Okay, somehow. Unfortunately, I just can't answer the question, but you know, I guess you know, an answer would be helpful um, for the future. But I, I don't, I, I think that they just left their seniors to manage their own situations. But I, but you know, don't quote me on that, I don't. I just haven't had anybody talk to me about, oh, we're doing this right now, and oh, we're doing that. And I've talked to them many times, so. or at least chair at Wheatley. All right, but I well, heard your thoughts. Thank you. So um, I think we should buy the bus and just 
be done with that. I think it's a good opportunity. I think that even if we decided that we wanted to do something different, we'll probably still be able to sell this bus for somewhere in a reasonable um, amount of, of what we pay for it and we'll get our use out of it. So I think that um, based on what I know from Dan and from Mr. Blue, looks like it should give us some good time. Because even a small, I mean, if we try to get a smaller bus, we're gonna spend more than $22,500. So Ms. Council Member Harding, I know that you um, had said we should move forward with it. Can we consider that a motion? Yeah, I'll motion it. Uh, motion for the use of us. Um, Is there a second? Council Member Mendoza, I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion further? Oh. Yes, yes, yes. Can I? Sorry. Um, so what are we doing with the, the bus that we still own a bus, right? Currently, that is broken or required lots of repa repairs? Um, the current two buses that we have are owned by Prince George's County. So we use them through the Port Town Transportation System and the SSTAP program, which um, it used to be that once you got a, a, you know, one of their buses to a state that they are now, they would give us a new bus uh, through the program. But over the last, I don't know, seven or eight years, uh, they have not offered any buses and they use the money that they get. It's actually a state program that goes to the county down to the municipalities uh, they send us a letter every year saying we don't have money to buy new vehicles. We are going to use it for operating costs, which means the county's operating cost of their bus system. Um, you know, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. So what everyone ends up with are older buses that need a lot of repairs. And, you know, eventually, you know, they get to a point where you know, the cost is, you know, benefit, uh, that the cost outweighs the benefit. So we would just give those, the bus, the older one, uh, back to Prince George's County, and we would keep the newer one as our backup bus. Mm -hmm. I know we have to had to fix one. Um, do you, do you remember how much we spent um, on it? And when was it? Um, I don't have it in the, by individual bus, but I know over the last four years, I provided you all with a summary. And for those two buses over four years, we've paid $52,000 in repairs. Thank you. That is a lot of money to, to pay to fix a bus that does not belong to us right in the end and that we have to return. Right. We are responsible under the program to maintain the bus. So we do have to, you know, we do have to pay for that. But, you know, I would think that a, uh, you know, bus that's 14 years old, newer than one of our vehicles and, you know, eight years older than the other would be uh, less maintenance. And over at the other municipality, they have their own mechanic, full-time mechanic that maintains their vehicles. So, you know, I, I feel that the bus, you know, was maintained very well uh, by their, them and have not had any uh, major issue. The only large expense they've had over the last two years is that while the buses were sitting, someone came and stole both of the catalytic converters off each bus and uh, they had to have new ones put on and they put cages on them uh, to prevent the theft in the future, apparently with a shortage of auto parts, catalytic converters have a high resale value on the market. And someone came right, uh, you know, parked out in front of the police department, came during the night and cut them out and took them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, um, so with these two buses, um, will, will we have to still maintain um, insurance on them that will cost us anything additional. Um, when when can we return them? Are we still going to use one for how long? Do you have Do you know, Mr. Baden? 
uh, as long as we want. Um, and yes, we maintain insurance on them. So, uh, you know, we, we can re return them to the county at any point. Uh, you know, for us to, you know, have it as a backup, you know, you're paying your annual insurance cost on it. If it's just sitting, you know, if you use it as a backup, then you have, you know, the other uh, gas charges and things like that. Okay, thank you. So the, the advantage for us, so the concern here is that if we let Bladensburg buy the bus, they could back out of the deal and we could lose the bus and then we would have to buy a bus. Is that, am I getting that right? But Bladensburg sort of. uses, uses we, it 85% yeah. of the time. Well, Bladensburg is not committed to buying the bus. So I don't think that's an option at this point. May they change their mind down the road, maybe. But I, I kind of like the mayor's idea. I hadn't really thought of that, but, you know, charge them a fee like Cottage City charges us for the code vehicle. But that and hasn't been we'll discussed be... with Williamsburg yet. No. So we don't, that's not a guarantee. No. Nope. No. I, just, but, I guess what I is... can't get my head around is why would we want to take control over a program that is 85% used by somebody else if its overall purpose is social good? but we're going to lose money on the process. What's the financial, is there a financial attraction to running this bus? I don't, I don't understand why a large municipality with a much larger bus budget than ours isn't running this system. I don't understand why we're trying to do it. I, I don't get that, but that's, I will leave it there. I just think that they should buy a bus and we can participate with the very small ridership that we have by comparison. I mean, you, you know, it, you, you, you don't ask an unwise question and I would not say it has not been asked before. Um, just historically wise, you know, it was Coma Manor who had this program and almost no town did. I think we in Mount Rainier, like in the beginning, were the ones who hatched onto the program when the county was giving out buses. And that was, that, that predates me. Um, we canceled the program at one point because it was too costly. Um, and then, um, and actually Mike's wife, was, Mike's wife was the one who drove the bus um, back then. But when we came up with the sharing idea with Williamsburg is what made it work. So you would might say historically, the reason why Cone Manor had it is because Cone Manor had it from the beginning and then bought Williamsburg and then Cottage City into the fold. And so it continued to be in Cone Manor. So again, historically, there was a point when um, Cottage City, um, well, Blainsburg broke off and they were like, no, 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 we can do this thing ourselves. We'll, we'll go ahead, we'll get our own van and, and do that. And they tried, um, I don't know why it failed, but they came back and were like, nope, nope, nope. We just wanna come back to your program again. We don't wanna do that one. And so then they wind up coming back in the full on our program. Um, so that's the, just the history of why it was with us in the beginning and then how it actually tried to go away from us, but it kept coming back. So that's where we are. In it. I agree with Council Member Bowles, but I was, was wondering if we can actually open the floor and hear what residents have to say, because we've been discussing this issue for a very, very long time. And we've been... We are not sure that we want to participate in the program that is run, that is mostly used by some other town. Um, but that's a, I'm, I'm here you, but it's, you know, keeping our partnerships together is a really important thing too, just to, to say that we're doing partnerships. But I'm not sure if we don't have seniors on this call, and most of the time we don't, that we're talking, we would be talking to the people who understand and know how important this is to them. So um, that's a little Well, maybe... Maybe they know somebody, maybe they have, they know someone who is using the bus, using the services, and maybe they can be, speak for somebody. So it will help us to make that decision because it's been an ongoing decision-making decision, decision -making process for us, and we are just having trouble making that decision. So we're in the middle of a, we're in the middle of a vote. So actually I have to call for the vote. Um, and then, you know, we can talk again, but I have to call for the vote. So I'll call for Ward 1. Aye. 
Ward two. Abstain. Ward three. Abstain. Ward four. Aye. The mayor votes aye. Um, thank you all for a great conversation and all that makes sense and whatnot. And um, like I said before, if we wanna make a different decision afterwards and let it go, the doors are not closed. We can still see what goes on and what happens at this point. Just to confirm, um, part of that motion included using the ARPA funds for it. I, I wasn't sure if I heard that. It was not. Um, however, I was thinking that for whatever we use, whatever we, even when we talk about our budget, at some point we're going to have to globally decide what are we going to apply to ARPA funds and which ones are going to be from us. Well, we, we approved the purchase of the vehicle by that vote, 302, the vote passed, but I just need to know what line item we're, we're charging that to, whether it is the ARPA line item or something else, because that wasn't stated. Okay, so... Um, is there a motion on the table for us to charge this to our opera fund? It was on the list, by the way, guys. It was in the. Uh, and if I may add, I was the one that put it on there. Yes, but I you wanted were. a I wanted a new bus for our town separate of this operation. I think it's a waste of money to buy a used bus, but that's my thought. Well, I um, I wasn't in disagreement with what Councilmember Bowles was saying. I believe if we put it under the ARPA funds, um, we can have further discussion on it. Um, but at the same time, I, 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 we're in the same bucket where we just keep putting things on with ARPA and we, we don't have the full, you know, vision of that's what why, we're doing with it exactly. I mean, that's, so. that's why my point uh, to Mr. Baton was that I felt like when we get to that point when we're trying to say these items are coming from opera, we could do it all globally and not now. Well, you just made a purchase now, so you need a funding yeah, source now. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. Um, damn. My bad, guys. Without a funding source, the purchase cannot go forward. Okay, um, what's on our... What's on the bus? What's on the bus? Okay, so is there a motion for us to use ARPA funds for this purchase? Yeah, I'm sorry. What's wrong with the unreserved funds? So, um, I just want to, I want to hear explanation. Yeah, sorry. If you go to unreserved funds, you're going to need four votes. If you go to the ARPA funds that are already in the budget, you need three votes. I'll make that motion stated. Is there a second? Was that motion for ARPA funds? For ARPA yeah. funds. Mm. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. All right. Any further discussion? I'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Abstain. Ward four. Aye. Mayor votes aye. All right. Thank you all very much. Appreciate. Oh, let's go and get through this. Um, I'm going to say, if you guys can get up here, we can spend maybe one hour to just at least do a glance at the budget and kind of get a feel for where we are. Um, and then we're going to just work out sometimes that we can meet again, because I think that we're going to have to um, meet another time. Um, but we should kick this off. You know, everybody else has, so I can't give it up right now. Um, but we need to have a short um, closed session um, just before we talk about the budget. So um, the next item here is adjourned to a committee as a whole for a budget discussion. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion okay. stated. 
Second. Councilman Brown, I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, so can y'all meet me in chambers in about 15 minutes? All right, see you guys soon. All right, see you soon. Thanks. Thanks.